Good afternoon, everyone. This is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews, and I am your literary ambassador. And today we have Dr. Vama Bagby on the channel again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Queenie. All right, please introduce yourself and tell us a little about you. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Vama Bagby. I am a and an author. I am a certified uh, Christian dating and relationship coach. I'm an ordained minister and a speaker, and I'm married to a pastor, I'm Dr. Bruce Bagby. I'm a mother of two adult daughters, and I have a son-in-law, three grandchildren, and my writing buddy, uh, Gracie, who's a German shepherd. I have just recently released my 14th book, I've only began writing as an author since 2018, so I'm excited to share more about my journey. All right. What is your genre and what attracted you to that genre? When I began writing, I started out uh, writing Christian nonfiction because that was just where I was comfortable based on my background and experience as a Bible teacher, trainer, all of that. And then I found that I discovered uh, fiction, and I tend to love it more because of the fact that Jesus wrote fictional, he told fictional stories and parables, that's all they are. He used common things to get a person's attention that they would recognize, but underneath his stories, he had more profound meaning and something he wanted them to learn from it. So I, I really enjoy fiction. So my last, this recent book is Christian Contemporary Fiction. So I, I think I'm really going to stay in this spot. Okay. Now, first, tell, tell the readers about the catch, No One Wants, the novel. The novel, woohoo! It is the story of a young woman in her 30s, and uh, she set a goal for herself to be married by 32. She's a believer, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, to be married by 30 but she's now 32 in the story and she's gone past her goal. So she's successful. She graduated from college and she had this on her list to do too, is to get her husband. So she's been busy trying to go through as many men as she could possibly trying to discover who that husband is. And her father gets concerned about the type of men she's been dating and prays that God help him to do some form of intervention. And uh, the answer he gets is to use what he knows. And what he knows is that he's an expert in fishing. So he invites his daughter, Veronica, on a fishing trip. And he, uh, on that fishing trip, creates five metaphorical stories or analogies of fish and shows their behavior that are similar to men. And he takes four of those stories and he demonstrates the type of men she's dated, the catfish who loves garbage, the sturgeon who likes to nibble, the... Um, Salmon, who doesn't like commitment, and then the puffer fish, who is beautiful to look at, handsome, but he gets agitated very easily. So that is what happens in the story. And she uh, embraces everything that her father taught because in his church, he's a pastor, he teaches his single uh, members about dating with intent to marry. And so she's gone through these courses, however, she just needed sort of a refresher. And the only way for him to demonstrate that she's choosing the wrong man was that he uses these fish analogies to help her to see that. And she embraces it right away. What was your inspiration behind the novel? I think the inspiration came a year before I actually started writing. Um, my husband who was preaching at the time, he just paused from his message and he wasn't even talking anything, he wasn't talking about anything related to dating or marriage, but he just paused and all of a sudden said, you know, look, ladies, if, if the fish aren't biting, it's time to change the bait. And I thought, oh, that's what I need to write about. And so that began my journey in writing this particular book. But as I moved along, initially, I thought it was going to be a four book series, because I actually went through a process of trying to determine what that would look like. But God said, no, not a series, just this book, and I'll show you what to do next. And so as it began to evolve, I realized that this, this title would not be that. I even had a book cover design that said that, but that wasn't to be the title. The title was to be The Catch No One Wants, because she had been passing on the perfect make for herself because she had this idea of what 
her husband should look like. So she just ignored this particular person the entire time. What has readers said about the catch? The most, uh, the most uh, surprising response I've had and consistent response is the fish analogies. The readers are shocked about the similarities between the fish and men. Oh my goodness. And they're starting to refer to men as, you know, one statement on my one Amazon review says, um, I've got to get this book from my coworker. She's dating a catfish. <laughs> one interviewer, a couple of interviewers actually remarked, I've dated all four of those fish. Where was this book when I needed it? And so that has been really not only encouraging to me, but a surprising response that they really, the fish analogy really resonated with the readers. Can you tell us what the fish, who the fish are and what they represent? The fish, yeah, the fish, uh, like I said, the father created the stories based on the men he's watched his daughter date because she's in a hurry. So she's not really scrutinizing the guys like she was taught to do. And so she, met the catfish that that's the one that hangs out in garbage he is garbage that's all he knows he doesn't want anything different he may even look debonair and dress the part but behind all of that he's just garbage and that's all he's going to ever be he's the hustler he deals with garbage and schemes and that's his life then there's the salmon who uh makes it very clear that he's not interested in getting caught and he too may possess a lot of, not qualities, but the things, conditions that women like to see. He could be successful. He can have money. He can have status. He can have all that stuff. And yet he makes it very clear he's not ready to commit because he's the one that balances several women at the same time. And then the sturgeon, his only interest is a little time with you. And then he moves on to the next conquest. So he nibbles. And that's all he's interested in doing. He's not ready to commit to anyone because he has the opportunity to taste and leave and move on to the next one. He's kind of the grab and go, I call it. And then the puffer fish, again, someone, the puffer fish itself is described as very human-like, beautiful eyes. So this guy can be captivating. And that's something we women tend to, tend to fall for is how captivating a person looks. Well, it's gotta be more than that person than just that. And so with his look, he has that, but he's easily agitated. He's got anger issues, he, he's abusive. And so all of these things, women tend to get caught on, caught up on the person's look, what they might look like, what they appear to be, because the catfish presents himself like he's something that he's not. He's not successful. All of that, we get just like the character of Veronica. She got hooked and captivated by the wrong things. And she ended up in the places she's in because she was just choosing the wrong guys. Now tell us about the homework basket. The homework basket, being a Bible teacher, minister, one who preaches the word, it was very hard for me not to include a lot of the scriptures because this is a fiction book. So I just, I prayed about what, okay, what do I do with all of this? What if somebody wants to know what was in that basket the father gave his daughter at the end of their trip? Because he gave her a homework basket, wickered basket, full of tools, books, handouts that he wanted her to read and study just to work on herself because that's the whole message. She's busy looking for a man, but she had not worked on herself first to prepare herself for the mate because the attraction to him would be who she is in the inside and she had not done the work there. So the idea came to answer to my prayer was to just create a separate little study guide. And this became the homework basket. It's got that name from the basket that the father actually gives his daughter at the end of the trip. So it's just a study guide. It goes over questions concerning each of those stories that he shares concerning the catfish. Because there's women who dated these guys in the stories. And you need to know, and it's a way to learn a little bit about the type of women that actually fell for these guys. So the catfish, the salmon, all of those stories. 
it goes over and has discussion questions for those who want to have that. And then it also includes some of the things that Grace and the father included in her homework basket. So you get to know some of that as well. How, how does the homework come and play with the novel? Well, for those who just, um, I don't write to entertain. That's the first thing I want to say. A lot of people look for books to entertain. I believe that's not my calling. I believe my calling is to create a story and to do storytelling that makes it interesting to the reader. But again, making sure that underneath it is the message I'm supposed to give. And so for those, if that's all they want, then they can just get the novel. But for those like, wait a minute, let me see. Because one of the comments I read on my Amazon review by someone said they started taking notes as they were reading the novel. And then they realized there's a homework basket to go along with it. And they said, oh, let me just get that. Mm -hmm. So it benefits that person who wants to do a deep dive and make notes and go into more detail concerning the stories and look at it closer. Then it serves as that as well. So I think that will help a lot of people who enjoy taking notes, especially if they're learning something different or interesting or new. Okay. Who is your target audience? Any one single, it doesn't matter the age, except it's not designed for teenagers, that's for sure. Um, unless it's, with, it's in conversation in a group so they can share. Because again, the focus is dating to marry. It might be good for teaching uh, them, but it's, uh, you know, a lot of teenagers are not really ready for this, but it's good information for them to have. So I would say the adult singles, whatever that age bracket is, it could be the person who had a relationship, was married, didn't work out. It doesn't matter what the situation is. You could be divorcee or you can be a widower, whatever it may, uh, whatever category. As long as you're in the single category, it should be of some interest to them. In the homeware basket, you talk about foods. Can you tell us about this? I, believe me, when I did the research for this book, I was... I was in awe too when I found out there were all, over 60 scriptures that just talked about a fool. And I thought, okay, if, he, if God gave us over 60 scriptures, there must be a reason for us. And there, he, most likely he wanted us to know more about the fool. And so it's important for us to understand it because a lot of these fish, at least four of them, are, were fools. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm assuming and I'm believing he wanted us to understand a fool so we wouldn't be one. And also so we wouldn't date one and absolutely would not marry one. But there are plenty of women out there who are married to fools and it's crazy. Now, I've heard some people say, well, you know, some of the things I've talked about in the fish can apply to women too. That's true. But the book is about a young woman who's looking for a husband. So yes, it can, it can be, women can be fools too. Because uh, Proverbs 14 and 1 says the wise woman builds, but the foolish woman tears it down. So we know that women can be fools too. But the goal in Grace and including the list of fools is so that she can understand and relate to the type of men that she uh, dated so that she not date any more fools because that's the type of guy she dated. So it's interesting, but it's also good to know how God describes them all the way down to how they communicate their lack of understanding, how hard-headed they are. You can't reason with a fool. I mean, it's a whole list of things that would make you go, make you pause and go, wait a minute, this guy sounds like a fool. Let me leave him alone. So hopefully that's what it will do. Okay, you say your target audience is single women or both? Single I women set out to reach I've, I set out to reach the single women because that's where my heart was, but I've gotten a lot of responses from men and actual men who asked for the book because they're learning too. So although I didn't set out to do that, it's absolutely perfect for men to understand it as well, including the homework basket because it talks a lot about things that even a man should know. Because like I just said, women can be fools too. Okay, what is the key message in the homework basket? 
I think the key message is we, we live in a dating world that's always coming up with creative things. My grandson even told me recently, um, there are young teenagers practicing dating using Zoom. So you get a bunch of girls on the Zoom and they talk to a guy, I'm going, oh my gosh. So even, right, even the dating method that a lot of people practice is only just a couple of hundred years old. So when you go back in scripture and you're talking about what God gave us that's over thousands of years old, it, thousands of years old, it gives us something a little more credible and we want something more long-term. So it must be the right path for us to take. And so it's intended to take us back to the way it used to be. You didn't visit someone or inquire about seeing someone unless you had good intentions. That's what they would say, unless your intentions were good. The father used to be the one to make sure you were, that your intentions were good. Mm -hmm. Now we don't have fathers in the home. Now we have some fathers in the home who really don't know that role. So I was hoping that this will capture some of those tools and techniques to help women to go back to, if you don't have a father figure and all of that, then the book talks about a wise counselor. Surround yourself. We talk about as authors having a tribe, whatever you, way you want to call it, it's those people whose lives are solid in your life. And that will tell you the truth to help vet or at least confirm this guy. And so all of these tools brings it back to the way with the tools that we were given takes us back to that and to use them because there's been some really horrible tragedies out there that should not have happened if we had applied some of these tools in the first place. Okay. Do you think it do you think this is a book we need in our in our society right now, today? Yes. You need this one and a few more. I think I'm working on a few more <laughs> ideas. I mean just to continue the story and the dialogue around the whole idea of dating with the intent to marry. I was in a uh, Facebook group and I actually responded and, I, and then I deleted it. I said, cause some people are not ready to hear the truth. So this is only for people who are interested in hearing the truth. And so they asked, okay, should I date the guy for six months? Blah, blah, blah. How long should I know? When, when, I, when should I know? And I'm going, oh my gosh, why would you waste your time with someone for six months? you should have an indication in the very beginning in terms of whether or not this is, first of all, a good possibility. And secondly, whether or not his intentions are the same as yours. He's looking for a mate to get married. You're looking for a mate to get married. It doesn't take six months for you to just figure that out. Some of those basic things you should discover within the four, first 40 days. Matter of fact, less than that, but just cap it at 40. Then they, some people started responding with saying, well, I think you should date them at least two years. You are not giving your life to some guy for two years. That's ridiculous. Before you even understand if he is the right person or not. In this process, dating to marry, once you both agree that you're moving in the same direction, it is your hope that he discovers you are the one and you discover he's the one. You need to make that clear in the very beginning. And when you talk to men, they say they know if you're the one the minute they meet you. So, so what are we talking about? He's, he knows the minute he meets you. You don't need two years. You might declare it and have conversations around our intentions and then continue to get to know each other. But you're going to make it clear what the intentions are in the very beginning. And that's what's important. And I think we practice a process that, that's ridiculous. I'm not hanging out with no guy for two years to only figure out you weren't the one and you're not good at it in the first place. That's crazy. But that's what we've become. Okay. Um, can you please talk about the 40-day rule and why we need this? <laughs> is what I just talked about to mention. The 40-day rule comes from scripture. Scripture says the number 40 is the number for tests and trials. Look, God is real when it comes to numbers. And if he says the number 40 means tests and trials, then that means your trial period is 40 days. That's what you have. At some point in my questioning you and asking the questions I should be asking, not just going through the, 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 
going through the uh, what's the going through the process of what we call dating today. No, you are going to make sure that you're asking the right questions to get you the right answers in terms of who this guy really is. And it does not take you forever to do that. You can do that in the first couple of times you've had conversations with this person. And hopefully when you have the opportunity to see them in person, then you can see their behavior. You can see their reaction. You can see their response more than just their words. You can see what how they react to the type of questions you ask them. And those alone will tell you where his intentions are if he doesn't declare it. Now, I was on an interview uh, the other day, uh, last week with the Black uh, Authors TV, and she said her husband asked her the very first time he met her. And that's when I said, that's because men know right away. Now, men won't say it to you because they're nervous about it, might scare you away. And many women are like, wait a minute, you just met me. They might feel that, but a man already knows. He may continue the process of getting to know you, but in his heart, he already knows you're the one. So it does not take two and three years. And 40 days is more than enough time. Explain some of the tools that are in the homework basket. Some of the tools I really like is um, the one like the conditions versus um, quality characteristics. It helps you to identify those conditions. Earlier on, I talked about the catfish might look the part. That's a condition. He's dressed right. He looks right. He may be even driving the right car. You don't know if it's rented, borrowed, stolen, because he's a schemer. He's a hustler. And so you don't know any of these, but you get caught up in how he looks. Sometimes in one of the stories, the guy walked in in his uh, suit, Italian suit and dressed to the nines, and he had a cross on his tie. And she got captivated with that, thinking God was speaking to her because the guy walked in with a cross on an attack. We just get caught up on those kind of things and come to find out he was abusive. So we look on the outside appearances. So conditions such as their physical um, look. What does that have to do with how he's going to treat you and value you as God calls you the crown, his crown? What does that have to do with anything? But we come up with these crazy conditions that we're looking for. And that's the reason many women are still single. They got these crazy conditions. And so I love the fact that we talk about it in the homework basket. What's a condition? Height, his income, conditions are those things that will change. There are many times in my life, married 48 years, I started off making more than my husband. What if I had the condition that says, well, you need to make as much as me? Well, I started my career before him. I was 18 when I began with state government. Well, my husband's career took off maybe within five years and he far <laughs> exceeded my salary. What if I said the condition at the time I met him and married him, it wasn't gonna work for me. And that's why in the book, I talk about conditions change over time. Conditions such as physical, how we look physically when we meet the person we want. That can change too. Health conditions change over time. Health can affect those muscles he had when you met him. Health can affect how tall he looked because you shrink over time as you get older, you shrink. I mean, th those, when you break them down, you can see how crazy it is to have conditions. It's important to have them. I wanted someone tall and I wanted someone with bold legs. I don't have any of those those things. But if I held on to those conditions, I would not be married right now. So we have to keep in mind that it's okay to have kind of a list because we talk about the husband to be list. It's okay to have a list, but keep in mind that you're not looking for those kind of conditions. But you do want to keep in mind too, that who God has for you, you got to, he has a list too. So you have to be careful that your list does not override God's list. Okay. What do you want readers to take away from the novel and the homework basket? I hope they take away some good golden nuggets that maybe they, they weren't aware of before, something they can use and apply in their own lives. Uh, because I hope that the stories, as well as Veronica's story, resonates with someone as 
did many of the people who I've heard from who read the book, they said, man, this was talking to me. That just really blessed me. And that's my hope that it will continue to do that for other readers. Okay. And what are you currently working on right now? I'm working on a landing page to offer additional fish analogies because many of the readers have asked for that. So I'm working on that as well as my, in my next novel, which will be released next year, The Women Who Tear Down the House. This time we're, we'll be talking about the women. And I hope the same thing. So I'm hoping that the men will be blessed with that, but also women might read it and say, wait a minute, I act like that. Let me, let me just fix my heart. Because that's one of the things in the homework basket, looking at what a good heart looks like and what a bad heart looks like. Stop blaming the men. If you're attracting a certain kind of men, then something's going on with your heart because they'll only be attracted to what's inside of you. So that's my hope. Those are my projects for now. And I'll tell you more as they begin to develop because I have a couple of ideas. Okay, where can we find you and your books? Oh, and I forgot. I have an anthology that's releasing in August. I forgot because we've been working on it for about a year and it's do it right the first time. And I had an opportunity to participate as one of the 33 authors. So that's coming out in August. You can reach me and stay connected on my uh, website, drvelma.com. That's where the landing page is going to be and where I will begin offering some of those free stories, fish stories. There's more analogies coming. And I can just give you a hint. I'm working on the Bass Brothers. So just keep in mind, we'll be talking about the trophies, the kind of men who are the trophies. When the scripture says the woman is the prize. So you can see there's a contradiction already. Stay tuned and by uh, following my page, you can see and hear new things that are happening. I'm also on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram, as well as Twitter. So as Dr. Velma back. Okay, is there anything else you would like to add before we close? I just want to thank you. I loved your questions today. I thank you for having me. You've been a great host and I appreciate it. Hope I get a chance to interview with you again. All right. Thank you for coming in today. And can you show your books? I know it's right behind you. Be sure yeah. You again. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome, Miss Queenie. Take again, care. This is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews. Happy reading. Bye, y'all.